Jim Watson is the mayor of Ottawa, and he is with me now. Mayor Watson, uh, first of all, thanks for taking time to speak with me. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Look, here we are in day five of these uh, noisy, disruptive protests. And uh, what's your message to these protesters? Well, the message is clear. You've had your 15 minutes. You had your rally on Saturday. It's time to go home. Go back home, talk to your own MPs and members of provincial parliament, and allow us to uh, rebuild our neighbourhoods that have been um, you know, affected uh, negatively as a result of people parking, honking horns, uh, allowing their vehicles to run all night, um, you know, harassing people who are trying to go in to get a cup of coffee. Uh, this is completely unacceptable behavior. It does a disservice to any message they were trying to get across, which I fundamentally disagree with. We have so, so few tools in our toolkit. One is masks, the other is, is vaccination. And, uh, you know, they have um, overstayed their welcome, quite frankly, and I think they're doing a lot of harm to the trucking industry and its image by having members of this convoy urinate at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and put up posters at the Terry Fox statue and been stealing meals from the Shepherds of Good Hope. I mean, beyond the words of condemnation from you and from uh, clearly other political leaders and, and uh, others uh, about these protesters, um, uh, the fundamental thing that people want answered is how long is this going to continue uh, before it ends? What can you tell the people of your city? Well, every day that the chief of police and his senior command do a risk assessment, a lot of these people came here wanting to fight, wanting to create violence. We haven't had that so far. We've had a lot of uh, very unsettling images and, and frustration for our residents because, as you know, Peter, uh, Parliament Hill is not just a series of government buildings. People live in the Central Core and the Golden Triangle and so on. And the, what the police chief um, has responsibility to do is to uh, ensure that a situation like this does not escalate uh, to a point where people become harmed or even killed. And we've seen escalations go at, you know, last year at uh, the Capitol building in, in Washington. So the chief has said, uh, first and foremost, that the situation has to stabilize, it has to de-escalate, and uh, they have contingency plans uh, at some point that they will uh, implement. And when they implement them and what plans they are, it's strictly up to the police. Right. Uh, you know, when, you, know you can't direct police right. on operations. So, so, I mean, then uh, let me ask you, because you're, you're part of the briefings, you're in on the conversations, obviously. How, how do you see this coming to an end, and do you have any sense of when? Well, it's going to come to an end. Obviously, this is not going to be allowed to go on forever. Um, in terms of when that will take place, uh, that, again, is a, an operational decision that will be made by the chief based on the intelligence that they've received. We've got a lot of police presence, as you know, police forces from across Ontario and Quebec are here to bolster our, our police services. And we've been very uh, patient, quite frankly, with this group. And the organizers have um, been uh, completely irresponsible in terms of any leadership or ownership of some of the outrageous activity and behavior of their members. And they should be the ones uh, telling their members, go back home, get back uh, to business, deal with your own local MPs and allow these neighbourhoods to uh, reopen again. How much is all of this costing the City of Ottawa? Well, it's $800,000 a day for police costs alone and then probably a couple hundred thousand dollars in overtime costs for uh, public works, bylaw, paramedics and so on. So it's very expensive and our taxpayers shouldn't be paying for this nonsense. We've asked our city solicitor to see what can be done with the GoFundMe uh, fund that they've raised over $8 million, whether that can be tapped into to pay for some of these extraordinary expenses caused by these truckers. Okay, is it also your intention to uh, uh, to ask the federal government to assume all or part of these costs? Yeah, we have a good relationship with the federal government and I spoke with the Prime Minister yesterday and he's assured us that the, the federal government is, is here with us in the long term. They, they recognize this is a burden on our taxpayers, so we appreciate his uh, positive perspective. What can you tell us about uh, the impact these pro protests have had on, uh, in some cases, life and death situations? H have you had any reports of people who've been unable to receive help from uh, first responders uh, because of, of these protests? There was one, <clears throat> excuse me, one story going around about someone that was delayed and, and that was proven not to be the case. Uh, the, the police checked into that. But it's been extremely disruptive for people who work in the healthcare sector, for instance. Uh, there's nurses and doctors uh, that I've seen reports on that are t two hours late getting to their 
their hospital or, the, or their clinic. Um, we had to shut down the Rideau Center. The Rideau Center, <clears throat> excuse me, shut down itself because uh, mobs were coming in without masks. We've had uh, two coffee shops uh, in, the, in the area that have shut down because um, staff were harassed by anti-maskers. So this is not only um, taking its toll on, on mental health, people living in the neighborhood having to put up with the, the noise and the nonsense, but it's also the economic health of our economy because as you know, on Monday, restaurants were allowed to open again. Many of the restaurants in the Central Court decided not to open because they didn't fear, they, they feared for their safety in that way. So it's a, a big cost economically and to mental health and to the social well-being of our constituents. Can I finish on this? Uh, I've lived in the city a long time and uh, you know the city well too, you've lived here a long time. Uh, but I think a lot of people outside the nation's capital don't understand there are kind of two cities here. Uh, there's, the, there's the federal legislature, there's the city of monuments, but there's also a living city of people who live and work here every single day and some do you think sometimes that's lost in the, in the idea of protest people come here uh, with a message they want to give to the federal government but often the implications are much broader than that for the, the people who call this home that's true you know there, there are two ottawa's uh, the community the municipality and, and the federal government uh, the problem is that we've never seen any protests like this, which is infringed on the residential part of the community. People who have come to protest, whether it's Black Lives Matter or, or other important causes, uh, have always been respectful of neighborhoods and communities. They've kept the protest up on the hill. Uh, they've worked with the police to coordinate traffic flow and so on. This group, group of yahoos have arrived here, no planning, uh, no thought put into it, and uh, complete disregard for people who live and work and uh, want to visit the nation's capital. So uh, look at, you know, as the old expression goes, you know, they've overstayed their welcome. It's time for them to move on. And ultimately the police will take action because this thing can't go on forever. Our Ottawa Mayor Jim Watson. Uh, always good to talk to you, Mayor Watson. Uh, take care and we'll talk again soon. Okay. Thanks, Peter. Bye-bye.